This justice actually has four legs, probably just likes to carry her around. She's six months old and she'll be going to England. Also, I'd like to remind you that when these dogs are actually operational in combat, they're all wearing um, protective body armour, which is stab proof and bulletproof. And to date, in the whole time we've had dogs in Africa, we have not lost a dog or injured dog during a poaching incident. So there's a tremendous success rate with no loss. As you can imagine, these are an integral member of our team. And they're a huge force multiplier, so we protect that asset. So they're in the helicopter now, and they're about to deploy. As they're, um, line, as they're lining up, getting ready to go out, the dogs are more than happy to go on the line. They know once they've actually been put into harness the line, they know they're going to get a bite. So they're happy little puppies. As they're going out of the helicopter, what we normally do is deploy smoke to the ground, fast quantities of it. So the coaches, if they ask them in the vicinity, don't know where the dogs are landing and don't know, dogs that don't know where they're coming out. The key difference between the poacher and the dog is, the dog is able to run through the smoke through its superior effectory glands in its nose, so it can still locate to catch, detect and apprehend the poacher as it's running if necessary, but the dog is in safety because the poachers don't know where they are. They're getting ready to line now, you've got Giles going down and you've got James going down. They'll probably they'll put a smoke down or a thunder flash down in it to replicate the smoke so the dogs know what's going on and then they'll start all the homework. Apparently we're waiting for photos, that doesn't happen in a poaching incident, but there we go. And apparently we've got a camera crew in the helicopter as well at the moment now. So smoke goes down, the dogs know. They're all, now they're switching on. You can see now how Justice is switching on to the situation. He's the younger dog, only six, as we said, only six months old. Caesar is the veteran, he knows what's going to happen, so he doesn't worry about it. So the dogs are going down online. Poachy comes out, and the fire, there's no what's going on, and Caesar's released. Caesar goes in for the kill, and up here is Poachy. That dog is now biting at about 220 pounds per square inch of pressure, that's because of putting your hand in a hydraulic press and just letting it shut on your arm. You're not getting free. The more you wriggle, the harder the dog bites, because to the dog, this is the game. As you can see, you need to flash all the gunfire, puts the dog off. The dog's running in at speed of about 32 kilometers an hour, we have a top speed of about 20, so when that dog hits you, you're absorbing 12 miles an hour of speed in the bite. Also, with the bite weapon decoy, you'll notice, you'll notice the difference between the bite that goes through the suit and actually hurt the decoy acer. Wolfston Kennels, I'm the senior dog trainer, uh, working along with Animal Saving Animals that we're here to uh, train the dogs. To, at the moment, they're losing three rhinos a day, 100 elephants a day, so my job is to prep these dogs over in the UK before they're then deployed over to South Africa, different other places around the world, India, um, across the globe, and we'll be training them where they then further on their training um, before they then eventually deployed uh, to go out on their first sort of mission at 18 months old. Uh, how long have you been working with conservation dogs? So we've been working with conservation dogs now for a good couple of years. Um, I've done a lot of working at height with dogs, um, a lot of repelling, helicopters, all that type of stuff. Uh, conservation is something that's really been growing the last five or six years, uh, quite a lot, and this is a bit of a new project as well, being down here working with a big cat sanctuary as well, and that's something that's quite recent to us, which is all good stuff. Uh, what time of time frame did it take to train these dogs up? Yeah, so the time frames are good. Well, as you know, every dog's unique, male, female as well. Um, but we've got to keep them in the UK till they're almost between 9 and 12, 
12 months old um, and then like so we further their training then over in, in deployment where they're sort of conditioned more to their surroundings and get a bit more real for their training. Um, what animals are they protecting? So the protecting a range of different animals at the, at the moment, depending on the conservations they go to and the continents they end up on. Um, this particular one will be majority uh, rhinos and elephants, um, and, and she will be an anti-poaching dog. We've got a bark up at the big cats, we've got the white lions behind us, out on display. A little bit of training, yeah. Um, what specific tasks are you trained to do? So specifically, these are like tri-purpose dogs. Uh, we take the dual purpose to the next level again. So we've got detection, um, imprint them on weapons, explosives. Um, they're also heavily focused on the uh, man tracking side of things as well. Um, and then they'll be doing the bike work as well, as well as all the descending, repelling, um, and prepping for a bit of vertical access as well, and fast roping for when they're fast roping out the helicopters, uh, which is a major thing, um, conditioning to them and training to that due to the nerves. I mean, all the pups are picked, hand-picked, um, the mating to put together, um, and it's really a bit of a, a good selection process for us to come out with the right pup for the right job. So you're really for a stable dog that's... Absolutely, yeah, we look for a totally stable dog, level-headed, um, needs to be nice and calm, social, especially at this young age, during the beginnings of the training. What, uh, what do you use the, the zoos and the animal parks for specifically? What, what do you actually need these for? Yeah, so for us, these, the zoos and animal parks, safari parks, are hugely uh, important to us, especially as, as an organisation, because this gives us a chance where we can sort of come out like this, visit the big cats, um, we can see some of the rhinos here, and it just gives them a, a good sensitisation, conditioning, a lot of environmental aspects to these these little pups. Um, this one is specifically 12 weeks old. And you can see she's just getting used to the big cats now for when she gets over there. We're trying to simulate really as much real training as possible before they actually go over there. So that smells, visual stuff? Absolutely, yes. Smells, visual stuff. Um, their own toilet as well can make a massive difference, tracks, um, yeah, it all makes a massive difference. Um, what breeds what breeds are used? So yeah, good question. There's a lot of various different breeds that can be used out there. Um, shepherds, classic German shepherds out there. We've got some bloodhounds out there. Um, and then there's also the, the Belgian Malinois, which are the sort of a, smaller than your German shepherd, but they're a lot more prey driven um, so and a lot more agile as well, especially for the dropping out of the helicopters, um, they come really come in useful for that. So the bloodhounds, what's that? Is that the bloodhounds, yeah, so the bloodhounds are like extremely good trackers um, and they're, yeah, they're excellent at tracking, perfect. Is that something you've worked with yourself? Not with the bloodhounds myself, no, but I've done a lot of other tracking, tracking breeds, the spaniels, the pointers. Um, have you got any affiliates? Anyone yeah, so we've, we're working along with Animal Saving Animals, that's a charity uh, that we work for. Um, I've also got a massive infrastructure support system at home, that's it. Thank you to all the guys back at home. Uh, I've got the guys in the demonstration that have come along with me and helped me. Acer, I've got one of the other guys, Vertical Combat, that comes out, helps me, takes care of all my rope stuff for me. Um, I've also got a big support back home for some of the puppy walkers and all the other guys that help me uh, with the kennels as well. Do these breeds, specifically Belgian Shepherds, are they good for pets? Ah, are they good for pets? They're brilliant for pets if you're not lazy. They need a lot of physical, physical and mental stimulation, don't we? Uh, I need to see lots of things, but they're very loving. It's all how they're brought up, really. Um, it's and you can, Bit of experience. Experience, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've got German Shepherds, they're just, they're a bit sort of, a bit like a German Shepherd, but a bit more driven and motivated, a lot more energy. Um, it's definitely a breed I'd sort of think more than twice about going out to the shops and getting myself. Um, yeah, that would be my advice. I'd definitely yeah, do your research before you go out and buy one. Um, all these end up going in really good homes 
they get looked after extremely well over there. They've got some really good facilities out there at the moment, um, and they'll be out working and kept active, which is what they're bred to do. Um, how much environmental training do these dogs need? Is it something they start early and finish after a couple of weeks to get continuous? Yeah, so environmental training is massive when they're at the Bringing the puppies out now around the big cats for a lot of environmental training. Um, and a lot of conditioning for when they go out there. This little one here will be going out to Africa for uh, the anti-poaching dogs. So this is a big thing for them, the big cats. The white side, the white lines behind us. And it's just getting them nice and calm around them. Big, lots of strong smells that they're not normally used to. It's just keep helping to try and keep the focus around all these big smells. It just conditions them for when they go out there as much as we can really before we actually get out, before they get sent out there. This little little one's 12 weeks old and she's uh, doing everything really for training. She'll be going out when she gets to around nine months. And uh, yeah, so far she's doing really well. As you can see, she's got switched on this morning. The lions aren't phasing her at all. I think the lines are a bit more phased. Really reactive as well to this morning. Down. Down. So this helps because you've done this work before, the clicker work. So yes, this is really helping you now in this situation, isn't it? We're using, we're using the clicker work and a bit of treats, focusing now just to keep her focus on me, keeping it away from the from the lions. See the dog's quite happy as well to work for me even though there's two lions that are coming up and down the cage at her. Um, she's still focused and unfazed as well so we're sort of doing two bits of training in one here really. Nice little growl there. Totally not unfazed. I mean, down at the big cat sanctuary in Kent. Beautiful place. Lovely private private cat sanctuary here that they've let us come down and use and demo at their event. And now uh, we'll be hopefully going live this afternoon. So we're making the most of all the big cats as well while we're here. Supporting the charity animals, saving animals as well. And I've been ever so good letting us come down here as well with them. But so far, so good. Bring the other dog over now for you and uh, let's show one of the older dogs. Our older dogs that will be going out. Another conservation dog. This one's six months old, so he's a big lad for his age. Again, it's the same sort of thing what we're doing with the little smaller pups, conditioning them to the white lions here. Got good five or six prowling around. We're just conditioning them again. Smells ready for when they get deployed out to Africa. Just taking it all in. Well worth doing again, clicking training, doing a bit of obedience as well to take his focus off it. That'll just help a little bit. Build his confidence and come over here nice and close. Just showing him he's got nothing to worry about because Dad's still here and nice and calm. Not too frantic, just only like it. Justice. Down. 